Good evening, I'm Abide Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. Corruption and smuggling handed to next political generation, younger generation and children of leaders involved in various crimes. Former Vice President's family under investigation. Women always deprived of leadership roles, barred from opportunities due to political parties' invested interest and nepotism. National Assembly Chair Arial to lose her position soon. Oppenheimer, the big winner of the 96 Oscars, scooping seven awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor for Chillian Murphy. Ukraine wins its first ever Oscar with Best Documentary. And Church Boys United blank armed police force 3-0 to lift the Japa Gold Cup in their first participation. Abayomi scores a brace in Church Boys' win. A four-point agreement has been reached between the government and loan shark victims. The four-point agreement was reached with the initiative from Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister Ravi Lamichani a short while ago. The culmination of the talks occurred after the protest, which spanned 23 days and involved loan shark victims marching from Japa's Kakarvita and Kanjunpur's Mahindranagar, finally concluded with successful negotiations at the Ministry of Home Affairs. The government has sacked governors of three provinces within a week since the change in political equation. The meeting of the Council of Ministers held at Singadarwar earlier today decided to relieve the governors of Gandaki, Madesh and Sudurpashim provinces from their post. The cabinet also decided to recommend to appoint Sumitra Bhandari as the governor for Madesh province, Dili Raj Bhatta for Gandaki province and Najir Mia for Sudurpashim province. Government spokesperson and Minister for Communication and Information Technology Rekha Sharma informed that the previous governor were governors were sacked and new governors were recommended for smooth coordination between the federal and provincial governments. Gandaki Province Governor Prithvi Man Gurung, Madhesh Province Governor Hari Shankar Mishra and Sudurpashim Province Governor Dev Raz Joshi were relieved from their post. Sudurpashim Province Governor Joshi was sacked by the federal government while he was administering the oath of office and secrecy to newly appointed ministers. Prior to this, government Province governors were reshuffled within a month of the formation of the government with Nepali Congress Mao Center Partnership. Meanwhile, the cabinet meeting also decided to transfer secretary at the office of the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers Ek Naran Aryal to the Home Ministry. Likewise, secretary at the Home Ministry Dinesh Bhatrai has been transferred to the office of the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers. Younger generation and children of leaders have been found involved in various crimes, corruption and smuggling, which has shown that the trend of carrying out illegal activities has been shifted to the younger political generation. A video was made public that showed Jitendra Poon, the son of former Vice President Nandabadur Poon, signing a document regarding a gold smuggling transaction. Proof of him using a copy of the national identity card of then Vice President Poon's personal secretary to transfer the illegal gold was also made public. Former Vice President Poon's another son, Dipesh, had also been alleged of having close ties with Dawa Chiring, who is one of the main individuals behind the 60 kilogram gold smuggling scandal. Lawmaker Amrish Singh at the State Management Committee meeting had demanded for investigation on Ganga Dahal. Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal's daughter regarding the Ensel scandal and also on Nepali Congress President Sherbadur Deoba's son, Jayabir. However, the government did not show any interest in the demand. Former Managing Director of Nepal Telecom Sunil Podel and former Executive Director of Security Printing Center Bikal Podel were arrested for allegedly amassing illegal wealth. Youths like Sunil and Bikal were involved in corruption with the backing of political leaderships. Likewise, former Deputy Prime Minister and CPNUML Secretary Topbadru Raimaji's son, Sandeep, was also arrested on 3rd of May last year in the fake Bhutanese refugee scandal. However, he was later released on bail. Former Home Minister and CPNUML Vice Chairperson Rambadur Thapa's son, Pratik, who was accused of also being involved in the fake Bhutanese refugee scandal, is still absconding. Likewise, it has been made public that ruling CPNUML's 
Vice Chairperson Vishnu Paudel's son, Nabin, also bought eight annas of Lalita Niwas land for 400,000 rupees. Nabin agreed to return the land to the government and a case was not filed against him. Likewise, former Speaker Krishna Bahadur Mara's son, Rahul, is in jail for being involved in the gold smuggling scandal through electric cigarette vapes. This shows that many children of high-ranking officials have been involved in some form of smuggling or corruption. In our public voice segment, today we have asked people in several provinces what's their take on the involvement of young generation in corruption. Let's take a look at what they had to say. I am not sure if you are a person who is 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 a संरक्षण <laughs> National Assembly Deputy Chairperson Urmila Arial has become the latest example of how patriarchy deprives women from leadership positions. CPN Mao Center leader Urmila Arial has been serving at the post for 14 months and was by default eligible to hold the post of chairperson once it became vacant. However, the new ruling coalition partners decided to field Naren Dahal, brother of Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal, in the election for the post. The party did not consider her experience at the upper house and her, in her, and her eligibility. Instead, she now has to step down from her current position. The ruling alliance equation has decided to field candidate from CPN Maoist Center for chairperson and one from CPN UML for deputy chairperson. This political move has dented goals of having women in leadership positions. However, this is not the first of such instances. During the then CPN UML led government, Deputy Speaker Shivamaya Tumba Humphe had to give up her position so the ruling alliance could manage political equation. Tumba Humphe was qualified in terms of experience and education to contest for the post of Speaker. However, her political aspiration faced a setback due to power conflict within the then Nepal Communist Party. As a result, disputed figure Agni Sapkota was elected as the Speaker. Political parties have established a trend of appointing close aides, especially men at decisive roles. It may also be recalled that when former King Gyanendra Shah took the throne, Taranath Ranavat was the Speaker of the House of Representatives and Chitra Lekha Yadav the Deputy. After the Second People's Movement and the re-established reinstatement of the Parliament, Subhas Chandra Nemwang was elected the speaker over Yadav, who had the first-hand experience of the parliament. Provisions to attain gender equality and proportional representation have been limited to papers as the number of women in leadership position, even within parties, remains dismal. Of the 13 office bearers within Nepali Congress, only one is female. The number is two for CPN UML that has 18 members in the Secretariat and one among 22 in case of CPN Mao Center. It's now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we had asked you, what's your take on the Prime Minister's announcement of not allocating budget for industries recording no progress while saying he will revive struggling industries? 25% voted for A, double standard, 45% for B, politics for vote, and 30% for C, adding burden on state coffers. And here's today's question. Why have political parties not given leadership opportunities to women? Your options are A, 
patriarchal mindset, B, not knowing capability, and C, lack of reach. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Two lawmakers have registered their candidacy for the election of the chairperson of the National Assembly scheduled for tomorrow. The ruling alliance parties have put forth their candidate from CPN Maui Center, while the main opposition Nepali Congress has its own candidate. Lawmaker Narendra Dahal from CPN Maui Center, representing the ruling alliance, has registered his candidacy for the election of the National Assembly's chairperson. Dahal has the support of CPN UML, CPN Unified Socialist, and Janata Samazbadi Party. CPN Mao Center's Gopi Bahadur Sarki and had proposed the candidacy of Dahal, while CPN UML's Devendra Dahal, CPN Unified Socialist Beduram Bushal, and Janata Samazbadi Party's Mohammad Khalid had supported the proposal. Candidate Naran Dahal claimed that his victory was certain and said that he would raise the prestige of the National Assembly once he gets elected. Likewise, lawmaker Yuvaraj Sharma from Nepali Congress has filed his candidacy for the position of the National Assembly's chairperson. Nepali Congress's Ananda Prasad Dungana proposed Sharma's candidacy, while Kiran Babu Shrestha of Nepali Congress and Lok Tantrik Samajwadi Party's Shekhar Kumar Singh supported it. The election of the chairperson will be held tomorrow and its result is scheduled to be churned in at tomorrow's meeting of the National Assembly. At the National Assembly, ruling alliance parties, CPN Maui Center has 18 members, including the vice chairperson. CPN UML has 10 members, CPN Unified Socialist, eight, and Janata Samazbadi Party has three members. Likewise, opposition Nepali Congress has 16 members, Lok Tantrik Samazbadi Party, and Rashtriya Janamorcha have one member each. Nepali Congress has issued a whip directing its parliamentarians against voting for Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal during his floor test. Premier Dahal is to take the, floor, the vote of confidence on 13th of March this Wednesday. Chief Whip of the party, Remix Lekhak, issued the notice and asked parliamentarians to be present during the House of Representatives session on, thir on the 13th and vote against the Prime Minister. On 4th of March, the Premier broke the partnership with Nepali Congress to join hands with CPN UML, Rashtriya Swatantra Party, Janata Samazbadi Party, and CPN Unified Socialist. That made Nepali Congress the main opposition. Meanwhile, Premier Dahal held a meeting with CPN UML Chair Oli at his official residence in Balwatar to discuss on the issue of National Assembly election, vote of confidence, government's common minimum program, among others. The government has aimed at attaining an economic growth of 6% in the ongoing fiscal year. However, low capital expenditure, flow of loans to the private sector, reduction in productivity and imports have hinted otherwise. Experts have suggested at reviewing tax policies and raising development expenditure. The government also aimed at limited inflation at 6.5%. 5%, which has been supported by the reduction in prices of petroleum products in the international market, along with the prices for edible oil and food. However, the economic growth ambitions seems to be a challenge for the government. The capital expenditure this year has been 4.1% lesser than previous year, which has also affected the loan disbursement in the private sector. Apart from the COVID pandemic years, Nepal has recorded an average economic growth of 4 to 5 percent in the past 10 years. It's time now for the international update. Oppenheimer is the big winner of the 96th Oscars after scooping seven awards including Best Picture and Best Actor for Cillian Murphy. The film, which had 13 nominations, also wins Best Supporting Actor for Robert Downey Jr., as well as Best Director for Christopher Nolan, plus film editing, cinematography, and original score. Emma Stone is awarded Best Actress for her role in Poor Things, which also wins Best Production Design, Makeup, and Costume Design. The Best Supporting Actress award goes to the Hold Overs star Divine Joy Randolph.
Sports News. Church Boys United blanked Armed Police Force 3-0 to lift the title of the sixth edition of Chapa Gold Cup. In the final held at Donlal Razbangchi Stadium in Chapa today, Abayomi opened the scoring for Church Boys in the 12th minute, scoring from close range. Abayomi scored his personal second goal of the match in the 75th minute from close range again, defeating two defenders to double Church Boys lead. Raju Pariyar found the back of the net in the 86th minute to extend Church Boys lead to 3-0. Church Boys United held on to their lead to secure the 3-0 win over APF and lifted the title. Church Boys won the title in their first participation of the tournament. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.